Hi, I'm Tom Irwin. I'm here to help celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Gloria Gates Memorial Foundation. And I'd like to introduce to you the person who made it all possible, Dr. Zane Gates. So my name is Dr. Zane Gates. My family was from Bedford, but I was born in Philadelphia. We lived there for six months and my mom, and the projects in Philly, my mom saw how uh, bad it was getting and uh, that my father didn't want to have anything to do with me. So we moved back to where her family was in Altoona, Pennsylvania, and we lived with my aunt and all her kids until we were able to get a place and on top of Booker T, which was a, a double duplex. But after a while, that place got condemned, so we were homeless for a little bit. And then Evergreen Manors uh, opened up, and we were the first people to uh, live in our apartment. Remember distinctly us, because uh, uh, we didn't have furniture, because um, they uh, red tagged the house, and we couldn't get what furniture we had left in, but luckily there was furniture in the garbage can from people who moved in, so we were able to get furniture there. My mom always put a blanket over it, and a new blanket, and it was a new piece of furniture. Um, uh, but uh, that may sound like a hardship, but uh, um, my mother was the happiest person you could ever meet. And I never could understand why. She was so happy because her whole life was spent changing other people's lives in her neighborhood. She proved that you didn't need, you didn't need money, you didn't need status, you didn't need fame. All you needed was a heart. And that's all she had. I mean, I would come to the dinner table and I would find uh, some strange kid there that I didn't even know. And I'd be like, what's this kid doing at my day dinner table? And she'd like say, shut up and pass the mashed potatoes. So she showed me at a very young age that what true happiness is, is whose other lives change and not necessarily how much wealth, fame, or, or material possessions that lead to emptiness. Um, she showed me that that's what true happiness was. That's the essence of Gloria Gates that fueled me. I remember uh, she taught me, uh, you know, when you look at a person, we're so quick to judge and define who they are, um, never knowing their story. My mom's best friend in the world, people looked at her, you know, and her, you know she didn't have teeth and she had poor clothing and she was smiling, but we loved her. She was my mom's best friend on this earth. I remember the day in college when I uh, got my first credit card and for Christmas I got them a microwave oven, they, the cheapest thing you could find, and they cried. That's how simplistic they were. And what you didn't know is that, that lady raised two kids and one of them went to college and the other one had a very successful job and their successful parents. So someone who was a hero was deemed as scum of the earth by the way that people looked at him. And my mom and me saw beauty. That was the essence of uh, what my mother taught me in life, that when you look at somebody, look past the superficial because the real person is where the heart is. We're all very flawed. The only difference between rich people and poor people is rich people can pay to cover up their flaws. Poor people can't. And that's one of my mom's greatest lesson was in, 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 in true happiness is finding the essence of a human being. That's where the happiness was. And that's what fueled me to want to go to pharmacy school because I thought, hey, there's no way a kid from the housing project could go to medical school. I was only 22, I was parentless, um, and she died of heart disease. She died of something that was easily preventable because she carried the wrong insurance card. And um, so she didn't get the, the kind of treatment that she needed, so she died a year later. Her you know, in her death, you know, a lot of sadness, but a lot of happiness because she inspired me to carry on her work. Her, she was the pillar of Evergreen Manors. All the kids, all the stuff, she worried about everybody, she took care of everybody, and I wanted to carry on that work, which to carry on the legacy, because someone with the inner beauty of her should have the world know how special she was and how her work was. So I'm just a mere extension of carrying on her work that she wanted to see. She wanted to have a better place for the kids. She wanted every kid to see the beauty in them and how special and that they could do anything they want despite what the outside world said. And 
that's what fueled me to start, you know, the Glory Gates Memorial Foundation from children. Um, not only do we really work hard on the education, because education's a big aspect, but the thing that we've always focused on is what my mom said would be the key is if to breaking the cycle of poverty is making them nice people. That's the key. It doesn't matter whether you become this rich uh, entrepreneur, we take the strengths that they have and we amplify them. We're, we're amplifiers. Because not everybody is brain is can do calculus. Some people can are wonderful drawers or wonderful with their hands. And they can have enormously successful lives just so as long as they're good people. So that's the cornerstone to what Gloria Gates is in the after school program. And we hope to someday to expand it into more hours and more things. But when I looked at it all, everyone said, well, what about teenagers? What about the, well, there's a lot of people doing work with teenagers, but as the physician in me said, by the time a kid's a teenager, they have been so beat up by the, the, the perils of poverty that it's hard to change what has been broken. You can save some of them. So that's why we went after the kids ages six through 12. Because if we could give them a good foundation to work from, that's what we really work hard on at Glory Gates. We focus on the academic things, but the academic things what give them confidence to make them succeed. We want to teach these kids first that they're loved and that they're special despite what everybody says about their neighborhood. But also, we want to really teach these kids how to dream. The most dangerous kid in the world is a kid that doesn't dream. And our goal is to get the kids to dream again. Then with their dreams, they'll have something to chase. That's what we're trying to do. We also want to teach kids to be healthier. In poverty, uh, the biggest thing is food, food insecurity. We make sure they have a healthy snack all the time. We're incorporating the medicine part into the, the other part. Powerful study, powerful study. Gloria Gates Memorial Foundation for Children is more important than Gloria Gates' care in the lives of these children. You say, but boy, that's a crazy statement. You know, they need to see the doctors, they need the immunizations. Yeah, we, we work hard to do that. But the bigger thing is, is this great paper that came out and said, the average lifespan for a African-American in Western Pennsylvania that's poor is 67. That's white is 70, still low. Um, and the average for middle class is 78 and rich is 83. If you can simply, by Glory Gates Memorial Foundation, get that kid to go from being impoverished to middle class, you add 11 years to his life or her life. That's powerful. And that's what the, the physician in me and the Glory Gates in me merged together. And that's what the, the Kids Foundation is all about. Not just providing a better future, but providing a better future for all the people that are in your life and around your life so that you can be a light that shines, that makes other people's lives better. My mom always said, how about be the most shining light for the little time you have in the world that makes the lights of generations go beyond you and be better? So that's what I've followed all my life, and uh, um, that's my story. Thanks, Doctor, for sharing your vision. And now I'd like to introduce you a very dynamic leader who is the executive director of the Glory Gates Foundation, Ms. Jess Bruner. My name is Jess Bruner, and I am the executive director of the Gloria Gates Memorial Foundation. And for the past 25 years, Gloria Gates Memorial Foundation has helped close to 1,000 children in the Blair County area. A quote that I feel that embodies what we do at Gloria Gates Memorial Foundation is by Dr. Rita Pearson. She says that every child deserves a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understands the power of connection and insists that they become the best they can possibly be. I feel that we do this every single day in our after school programs here at Gloria Gates Memorial Foundation. What started out as a dream for Dr. Zane Gates became a reality on March 6th, 1999. And by that following school year, the first Gloria Gates Memorial Foundation after school program started right here in Evergreen Manors. 
Now in 2024, for the 2024-2025 school year, we are adding our third site at Overflow Church right here in Altoona. The goal of the GGMF after school program is not only to provide a safe, structured environment for children to attend after school, but it is also our goal to provide them with the educational resources, the educational enrichment to continue what they are learning in school and provide it here in the after school program. We also provide a healthy snack. Our snack every day consists of a fruit and or vegetable, a grain, a peanut butter, a Nutella. Um, we try to provide healthy snacks every single day for every child that attends the after school program. I wanna take something that Dr. Gates has said and use it, and that is we are giving a hand up, not a hand out. We are providing tools for the children who attend our after school program to take outside of these four walls every day and apply them to their everyday life. Character development is another thing that we really, really try to focus on. How to be part of a community, how to be a citizen, how to be respectful, how to be kind. And all of that is modeled through our teachers. If we have a child who is struggling, let's say in, in math, our teachers can reach out to that child's classroom teacher, their guidance counselor, the administration and say, hey, we've noticed a struggle. Is there something that we could do? Could you maybe provide us with you know, some reinforcements that we could do with this child during homework time? Um, or if a child has forgotten their homework, we can reach out to the teachers and say, hey, so-and-so forgot their homework. Could you please send me a copy of it? Or is it okay if I make copies of another student who happens to be in the same class? So that constant communication with the schools, it allows us to fortify what we do as far as helping them with homework and studying and you know, providing them more on top of what they're already learning in the schools by bringing it into the after school program. Over the past 25 years, GGMF has been able to provide after-school programs thanks to the generous donors, the grantors, people who volunteer their times and talents um, to the program itself. And with that money, we are able to provide the, the field trips, the special events, the special you know, prizes that we give to the kids. We're able to provide them with the educational materials that we need, the craft materials, the art supplies. If it were not for those donations and those grants, we would not be able to do what we do. But on top of that, without the people, the team members that we have, the teachers, the adults who show up every day, Gloria Gates would not be able to do what it does every day. Gloria Gates Memorial Foundation would not be able to do what it does without the support of our community, grantors, donors, past and present board members, past and present staff members, and most importantly, the families that we serve. We invite you to consider being part of the Gloria Gates Memorial Foundation's continued success, whether it's by no donations, volunteering your time, or simply raising awareness, help us extend our reach and impact. So thank you for your time. We hope that you will continue to support the Gloria Gates Foundation and Dr. Zane's vision.